Hi, I'm Mal and welcome to another episode of Mini Model Makes. In a recent video I unboxed the Imperial Guard Lemon Rust Battle Tank and its Forge World cousin the Death Court of Krieg Lemon Rus Vanquisher. I opened them up, showed them what you got inside and the differences between the two kits. In today's video I have already assembled our main plastic Lemon Rust there I'm going to show a quick and easy Death Core of Krieg style simple scheme to paint up a tank that will look really good on the tabletop and is really quick. We're still in lockdown at the moment so everyone out there I hope you are keeping nice and safe and keeping indoors. I'm going to set up the overhead cam and get my paints and bits and pieces ready. What I will be doing though is the first step I'm going to undercoat this tank with Citadel Mechanicus Standard Grey Spray which I think is absolutely amazing so it will have a nice even layer on of that before we start. Alright so I'll get that camera set up, get this undercoated, see you shortly. So our tank is now undercoated with the Mechanicus Grey Spray, absolutely amazing spray, I like to use it quite a lot for vehicles and other models. What we are going to do for our first stage is we are going to dry brush this model. I will be using Citadel layer Dawnstone and I'm going to be using a dry brush. Now when it comes to dry brushing I've heard people say use your ratty old brushes use makeup brushes loads of other bits of the you can use uh round brushes you've got these flat edged ones there's chisel tip ones there's you know you don't have to buy citadel just buy sort of a cheapy one like this from somewhere because it's it's going to do the same job basically don't use posh nice brushes to dry brush with now, I used to be a big fan of that, but I've just decided to splash out on some of the Artis Opus D brushes, which are dry brushes. I think the set has cost me in the region is £60-£70, and I'm going to see how it is because what I've noticed with painting recently, I'm starting to not be as afraid of using fancier brushes for my painting and looking after them a bit more and I'm seeing some results with it. Painting's becoming a bit easier for me. So anyway, I've taken a little bit of the Dawnstone out of the pot. I digress. We've got some tissue paper here. It's textured. What I'm going to do is get most of the Dawnstone off. Now the other thing with this is less is more. It's better to take too much of the paint off and be ages doing this rather than be impatient and get loads of done stone all over your model which you don't want to do. I'm going to take the turret off, move that to one side, we're going to get the body of our tank and we're just going to run it very lightly and quickly over their areas. What we can do if we sort of catch areas we don't want to is use Mechanicus Standard Grey just to tidy up. Just concentrate and trying to keep that in shot for you. It's the big thing I found doing these videos. It's it's hard enough trying to paint. It's hard enough trying to paint and keep things in camera. <laughs> Biggest thing I've learned. So you see the paint is starting to pick up on these raised areas. I don't know if the camera is showing it but I'm starting to see a difference there. I'm going to get more. Probably took too much off that. A little bit more just straight out of the pot. Don't get it in the ferrule part of the brush. Just there. Put it back onto our tissue paper get it into the bristles tank again 
just very lightly. Drawing it over the area of the tank. Turn it over. It's almost like the two thin coat principle. You know, do multiple dry brushes and build the colour slowly up. So, I think you can just about see a difference with the camera showing it up slightly. We're just going to keep working at that. I'm going to work away all over the tank and the turret. That's the first stage done. And I'll come back to you when I'm, I've done that little bit. All right, so our subtle dry brush of Dawnstone has been applied to the turret and the body of the tank. I don't know if you can pick it up on camera, it is quite subtle, but to the naked eye, it is, you do pick it up, it does draw attention to the fact that it's highlighted. So that's both things done there. What I am going to do now is I'm going to do a pin wash on the tank. I am going to use, Set he's reaching over everything and knocking all these bits and pieces over. Non oil shade for this. One Citadel once again. Got my palette handily here to the side. Now for the pin wash, I'm going to pop my null oil down on the palette here. You don't need to mix anything in with it or add water or anything like that. I'm just popping it on the palette just to give myself a greater degree of control over. And what you're using, the, the capillary action of the brush to pick up the wash. And then I'm going to focus the wash in all these lines here. So just run your brush gently all over everywhere what you'll find is the wash that the brush has picked up will just automatically go into the detail and combined with that very subtle dry brush of Dawnstone now start to bring up definition in the tank now pick everything out here so all the recesses around the hatches, the handles themselves, you can almost run the brush over and it fills in the lines for yourself, that's, that's that capillary action that I'm talking about. And we are going to do all the rivets as well, so all you do is you touch each rivet and it just picks up a layer of wash like that and then highlights the actual rivet as I say dab it on and then you can gently start tidying up with your brush as you move along so I'm going to finish now all the rivets and lines and other bits and pieces. I've shown you the principle and all the areas that you should concentrate on. If you get a bit messy you can dab it with a bit of paper or water to, to get rid of the excess and just keep it in the line. The other thing you need to do with this is make sure you go around all these edges too. Try to be as neat as you can, but the natural action of the brush will help you with this. Because we need to separate all these areas and these ones also. 
I'm going to carry on now with the rest of the tank and when that's done we'll move on to the next stage okay so for the next stage now we've got our tank with its lovely pin washed outlines on it to make it nice and clear which is good the turret as well I'll take the turret back off so I'm going to do the tracks next and for that I'm going to use Citadel lead belcher quick shape now with vehicles I'd, and other such things I like to use different metallic shades for different areas because not all the metal would be the same on parts of the tank the exhaust metal would be different you know a different quality compared to the tracks and the weapon barrels and things like that so you'll see I'm really probably only going to do the tracks in this I'm using a character brush on there just mix a little bit of water in with our lead belcher try and zoom in a touch and I'm going to go around all these trapped areas and just taking a little bit of care on the areas here at the sides just to make sure I don't get any on the tank if you do of course just Go back to your Mechanicus standard grey. So I'm going to go all around the tank. What I'll probably do is pick out the side bits with this neat brush, neater brush first, then get a larger brush and fill in the rest of the tracked areas. Okay, so you've seen enough of me doing this bit. I'll carry on with the tracks and then we'll move on to our next stage. Our tracks are complete there. That has taken five minutes tops. I used my handy hobby hairdryer which you can pick up for a few pounds from any old local shop to speed up the process next to no time then. So including drying about five minutes you really can push out these tanks in a quick amount of time as long as you know a few little hacks tracks are done as I was talking I'm going to use different metals on different areas so my next one and excuse it's covered in paints so you can't really make it out this is Vallejo metal colour which is the four airbrushes or designed for airbrushes but you can paint them on as well this one is exhaust manifold you, you can't really make it out because it's covered in paint, I had a paint explosion on it for some reason. And what I'm going to do with this is pick out the exhausts on the back of the tanks. So when I was putting this together, there was a section of the tank where you can actually set up your exhaust differently on the back. You can put the box in the middle and an exhaust either side, or the two exhausts at the side. So I went for the two together. Now that's our exhaust manifold paint I've just put on here. As you can see it's designed for airbrush, it's really thin, you don't need to water it down. I'm just getting these exhausts into frame. And you've got the tracks next to them as well, so you can you can see the difference. It's a lot darker colour, so it's it, you know it's the exhausts are being made from different metal. The, probably wouldn't use the same metal for the areas the exhaust the, you know can you can get away with using cheaper metal areas or buying cheaper metal to make exhaust then you can a tank trap which would be taking a lot more pounding same with weapon barrels you'd be using probably a higher grade metal for things like last cannons because of the stress that the metal would be under then you would for you know these exhausts as well so what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint the rest of these exhausts and we'll move on to the next stage so my exhausts done uh, they will take a little bit longer to dry than normal paints with them being so much thinner and starting to look really nice there I'm going to pick out some more metal areas now for this next paint I am going to use an army painter metallic which is the 
gunmetal. I'm going to pop some of that onto my palette. I do prefer dropper bottles, I really do wish Citadel used the dropper bottles instead, they're just a little bit neater. And I'm going to look for areas around the tank now, things like the weapon barrel on the LAS cannon, which I'm going to be careful with there, and the actual barrel of the tank, it's out the main weapon barrel. Now what I'm going to do is, I'm going to pick out this area. I'm going to leave the baffle, I believe it's the baffle, in the grey. And then I'm going to pick out this area as well. And I'm going to be looking at this area. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with that one quite yet. So I'm going to work around these areas. What I'm also going to use the gun metal for, because it's, it's quite a nice generic colour. I'm going to pick out things like the rivets around the hatches, you know, where the hatches would open and things like that on the tank as well. Alright, so I'm going to finish that off now and then we'll move on to the next stage. So I've picked out all different areas of the tank with the different metals. Same with the turret with the barrel and the little hinges. What I want to do now is to pick out some other areas with the different metallic. What I'm going to use this time is Balthazar Gold and I'm going to go over things like the Eagles and as well as the Eagles there's little sections on the back of the tank like the wreathed skull and I'm probably going to pick out these reinforced areas of the barrel with that Balthazar gold as well tiny drop of water into it there and my wargaming character brush here and so on the turret I'm going to pick out this eagle on the back now because I'm predominantly one colouring the, the hull of this tank we really have to pick out some areas in different colours to draw the eye to these areas and make the tank seem not as sort of boring to the eye, make not as monochrome. So I've got a gold eagle there. I'm going to do this uh, part here as well on. top of the guard. Don't have to go mad picking things out with this colour. Just the odd area really. As I say we're trying to make the, the, the tank look more exciting. That's that area. back of the winged Astra Militarum skull. I'm going to pick out this wreath as well on the back here. You, you can do these other colours, you could do them white, you can, you know, you can do actually go for a white skull and a green wreath. And I'm going to pick out this area as well on the back. So I'm going to carry on with them, tidy all these areas up and we'll move on to the next stage. All the gold areas have finished there so for our next step it's going to be a really really quick wash now of good old Agrax Earthshade. 
over the tracks, all in fact all the metal areas, the gold and the silver. Once more, get plenty of wash onto your palette to help you with control. For all of those who are new to painting or looking or very very basic level of painting, palette really does help you control your colours. Can't recommend them enough. What I'm going to do, I'm going to take the turret off. I'm going to hit all these tracks now with one of the most amazing paints in or washes in wargaming. I love Agrax Earthshade. Someone once called it liquid talent in a pot. Can't, can't agree with that more highly. You know, for those of you who are just worrying about blocking on main colours to begin with, hit everything with a little bit of Agrax. It really does make your models stand out. Also, you know, these hinges here. And importantly, the gold areas and this mesh. Don't forget all your bits on the back of the tank as well. And these exhausts, don't forget those too. So I'm going to hit all these areas up with this lovely Agrax wash and then I'll bring up the next stage. For our next stage, after our wash of Agrax on the metal areas, we're going to use Citadel Iron Breaker and we are going to dry brush the tracks here and then we are also going to use iron breaker and a smaller brush to pick out all the individual rivets on the tank that we have pin washed this is going to really make the tank sort of pop at the minute it is quite drab with just the few colors on it and the fact that it's gray it's not camouflaged it's just gray so tracks it's, it's just a simple case of a really light dry brush over these areas and as you can see really starting to make the tracks pop a bit better gives them a lot more depth should be able to make it out the difference between that one there and that one next to it there and then for a smaller paintbrush Use our palette, make sure we've got some of the iron breaker on there with a little bit of water into it, not loads. And look at the rivets on the side here. All you've got to do is just gently touch your brush. there it starts to really make these areas pop this is probably going to be the most time-consuming part of the entire painting process but it's really worth it you can see there it's starting to pop already all right I'm gonna carry on with all that now there's no point 
having you watch all of that and I'll be back with the next stage. Finished the dry brush of the lead belcher and picking out all the rivets. I think you can see that it really does make the tank pop now. Yes, it's probably the longest stage you're going to have to do and is a sort of bit time consuming, but it really does make a massive difference to the overall look of the tank. What I would say is be careful when you, you're doing this, do half at a time or a section at a time because what you find is as you're holding the tank, you could cover somewhere that you've already done, get the metal in your fingers and then you're rolling the tank around and you, f you get fingerprints of all the metal all over the tank when it's from the areas it hasn't dried and your fingers brushed against it. So just do little sections at a time, wait for it to dry and move on done all the exhaust hatches all the areas the barrels last cannon barrel so the next thing I'm gonna do now is I'm going to do all the gold areas that I've got in the tank and I'm gonna use Gehenna's gold which is my next paint so I'm gonna just mix some of that up on my palette a little bit of water Let's get some control on the brush I'm going to pick out areas like this eagle on the back of the tank and also the eagle on the turret as well what I'm doing is just Picking out the raised areas, leaving the rest of the gold underneath. Let's give that a lot more depth. You can see I'll finish off this eagle in a second. Same with a winged skull. Try to get the bottom parts of each section of wing on this and leave the dark area at the top skull as well if you pick out around the eyes nose top section raised areas of the skull and I'm going to do the back of this vent here as well and then I'm going to pick out this motif on the back, the, the laurel skull and pick out some stuff on the barrel so I'm going to do that now what I will say is with the actual guard of the gun I'm going to pick out more the raised sections and the edges and also the rivets and leave the inner areas dark alright so I'm going to crack, crack on with that and I'll see you at the next section. So this is the tank finished. That's done to a, a good tabletop standard and doesn't take that much effort. You can, you can do a tank in an afternoon easily. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna put some company markings onto the tank though as well. For this, I've already put my Tamiya tape or you can get any kind of model tape, put it flat onto the tank for my stripes. So for this what I do is if you get a piece of sponge which you can get from any kind of blister pack or anywhere really and I'm going to pull off a piece of that sponge and just pop it into some tweezers to hold on to. Now my company markings are going to be red and white. So for this stage it's Mephiston red. As you would normally take, if I move this slightly, move my palette as well. Take your paint out of your pot, pop some onto your palette. little bit of water in there 
you don't need much and then I'm gonna get some of that sponge section pop it into my paint so you've got some onto the tip like that and then all I do is sponge it into the areas just keep dabbing and building it up now a little bit more paint get it into those areas what you can do is you can use a brush as well neaten it up if you want to this is just a, to give it that kind of rough just been kind of painted on feel that's my first stripe second one at the back there. What I'm going to do is leave that section now just to dry in up. You can tidy up a bit with a brush if you want. I'll have a look. And then I'm going to do a white section in between. So I need to wait for this to dry. I'm going to then put some tape sections onto the red which will be the next stage. So I'll see you shortly. So the red areas have dried now on our markings I'm going to do exactly the same as you see I've covered over the red areas I'm going to use white scar I've popped some onto the palette already to get my piece of sponge into my tweezers onto my paint and exactly the same again just Push it into those areas just to give it that weathered stripe impression. A little bit on there. I'm going to take my tape off. Still got my red stripes. Be careful with your tape, make sure you get a decent supplier like Tamaya because cheap tape can just take the paint off the top but there are our very rough weathered squadron markings onto the tank there as I said I'm trying not to make them look perfect I want them weathered that's what I've done what I will do is I'll tidy up that metal section now because I've got a little bit of paint onto it and then we'll move on to the next stage I'm going to go through a little bit of weathering on the tank so my stripes are finished now that kind of weathered dirty look to them what I'm going to do now is do some more weathering on the vehicle I want to sort out the tracks this is going to be a Krieg tank so it needs to be covered in mud at some point now for this next one what I want to do is create the effect of muds on there it's dried been left there into the next battle new mud it's all got wet and, and and so i want to build up kind of a patchwork effect i want some paler sort of dried mud on the tank and then wet darker mud underneath so the way i achieve this is i'm going to use some of the vallejo game air earth really lovely color absolutely superb what I do for the, I'm going to use an airbrush for this. So I've got a nice Harder and Steenbeck airbrush, which I absolutely adore and should use far more than I do. I'm going to put a couple of drops of my earth into there. And then I'm going to quickly take 
So just a quick test of the airbrush just to make sure it's working against the piece of kitchen towel before I actually pop it onto the model. We get onto the side of the model like this and just gently run the airbrush along the base just to start picking it up there. If you don't have an airbrush you can do this effect with the sponge again. the sort of effect you're looking for on the tank there. What you can also do is just run it over the front areas and also the back because what did pick up there. Don't forget the inner areas too. Doesn't have to be a lot just can see there some areas you can put it on a bit thicker some areas sorry it's not the easiest to but that's how that gives our appearance there of drier weathered mud Could have been left over from the battle before. Exactly the same now with this side. Instead. Lay it on as thick as you want. I, I recommend you don't put on that much though. There we are. Sorry for getting that out of shot. that's it that's the first stage of the tank weathering so the side of our tank is nice and dry now and you've got that sort of dried mud kind of aspect to it and what we need to do now is worry about sort of wet mud now for this next stage what we're going to use is we're going to use Sterland mud which is technical paint and what you need for this is an old ratty paintbrush that you don't really care about. I've got a really old blast from the past one still here. And we crack open our pot. You get this nice kind of texture to it. Let's put some more light onto there. What we're going to do now is we're going to build this up. Now what you want to do is leave this paler undercoat showing higher up this is for sort of lower down the tank give us that what you can do is you can look at some pictures of tanks and tractors and other such vehicles and study the pattern of how mud builds up on tracks building things like a bulldozer or anything along those lines um, yeah just study the artwork study photographs and look how it would build up as you can see it trashes your paintbrush so Make sure you're using an old ratty one for this. So there's one side done. Exactly the same with the other. You know, it's going to catch more in these recesses. So make sure they get a good... of this Sterland 
Вот. of course is this front glassy of the tank build it up onto there a little bit give it some sort of spatter marks you can even sort of flick you brush it a little bit and you want to get some on your tracks as well We are going to do another weathering trick with these tracks in a moment. So I'm going to finish weathering that and then I'll show you my next little trick for the tracks. Okay, so our sterling mud has dried there and built up an extra layer of weathering and grime on our tank. Make it look even more like it belongs to the Death Corps of Krieg and it's been on some battlefield somewhere. What we're going to do now is we're going to do our tracks. What I'm going to use for this is a weathering powder. Now this is Forge World weathering powder, medium earth. Forge World is a subsidiary of Games Workshop, for those that don't know. And they sell some of the more serious model kits that you can get out there. And they also sell things like these weathering powders. Now the big thing with weathering powders is they get everywhere. So be careful what you're doing with this. Um, you can, you know, put your tank into a box or something along those lines because this dust goes everywhere. I'm going to try and open it very gently. You can see the dust in there and the colour of it. It's quite nice. I'm going to get my ratty old paintbrush again. What I'm going to do with this is make a paste. So I'll put my earth on there and make sure the lid is nice and tight. And we get our water and we add it to the weathering powder. And then what I'm going to do with that is just run it over these tracks and water it down even more. You don't have to do the, the underneath of the tank with this, you know, you'll get away, no one sees those tracks. But just liberally put it over the model. You can add more water to take some off if you desire, because parts of the track would show through. Try not to clog it up too much and show some of that dry brush highlighting that you've done with the tank off. Turn my tank around, do exactly the same. So I'm going to do all that now, I'll, I'll do the rest of, of these sections, I'll let it dry and then I'll show you what it looks like. The tracks here, you can see they're still drying at the moment. What I'm going to do is I've taken the turret off and I'm going to do some work on the lenses for the turret while I'm waiting for those tracks to dry. So a little bit of adjusting here. I'm gonna move 
my tank out the body out the way, let it dry, and I can bring in. Now for my death call, I envision kind of a sickly green light in the inside of the vehicles, which I want to show with with these lenses as well. So it's going to be Caliban green. I'm going to mix some up onto my palette very quickly. Yeah, Caliban green, dark, nice dark green. Put some of that water down and on my palette so I can control my paint. Here we are, and then it's just these lens sections here. I'm going to begin by painting those green. So there's a few of these. around the cupola of the turret this does dry a nice dark green which is really what we're wanting for this so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to finish off these and then I'll move on to the next step so we've put our first colour on our lenses and the next colour we're going to use now is Warpstone Glow. Amazing green. Really do love this colour. I'm going to water some of it down, pop it on my palette because I want some control over this. And what I want to do, so I'm just trying to get as much light on it as possible, is make a curved shape sort of going up and across the lens difficult to pick up but I'm leaving the top left corner the dark Caliban and the bottom right corner in the warpstone glow Just take practice, if you make mistakes it doesn't matter, just go over it again with your Caliban green. I'll just try and paint a diagonal line going across like that. I think I've got one more to do. I'm trying to keep it in shot. That's it. So I've sort of got a diagonal sweep across each one. That's the next stage of our lenses. I'll just leave them to dry. Our next colour we're going to use now is Citadel Moot Green, which is another fantastic green colour. And we're going to carry on some work with those lenses. I've put some on the palette, watered it down slightly to give us some more control over it. What I'm going to try and do now is just the faintest corner here. So trying to get, you've got your dark section, you've got your warpstone glow middle section, and then in the very bottom corner you've got your moot green. Three colours on this, like that one there. Faintest bit of moot green. That section, and also get it into shot. Really does test me trying to paint on a camera. <laughs> right, that's those sections done there. That's giving us kind of that glass effect and as if there's sort of a green light slightly emanating from them. What I am going to do now as well is white scar. I'm gonna just get some of that, pop it onto my palette. Same again, I've just watered that down on the palette. Just tease the very tip of the brush in there. And what I want to do is just Oh, that's 
top left corner there you can see it just gives you that kind of reflective glass or the illusion of reflective glass the same again very faintest white mark on there and there are lenses what you can also do with these lenses is after you've varnished your tank to protect it I always use a matte varnish you can then go back to these and put a little bit of gloss varnish over these areas to help with this effect and they are our lenses really simple but looking at my distance on the table really does give it that kind of glass effect which I'm sure you'll agree looks pretty cool so our lenses are now finished the turret is now back on top of our tank and you can see the tracks have now dried and that's given us that kind of dirt aspect to go on them which I think you I think looks really good I hope it shows quite nicely on camera gives those worn that worn track effect look and that's our tank now uh, essentially I've got to put the transfers on it yet but that will probably be a video for another time there and there we have our Lehman Russ death core of Krieg inspired grey tank weathered up really nicely really easy effects to do and I hope I've given you some inspiration there and some ideas especially if you're painting up some Death Court of Krieg tanks yourself okay so what I will do now is I will go to the wrap up section uh, what I might also do as well is I'll try and get this on the turntable properly so you can have a look at it all right so that's my video on the imperial guard lehman russ that i've painted up in creek colors what i will do is i'll put that up onto my little turntable i've put my transfers on it now and i'll let you guys have a proper look at it in a moment so not much left to say apart from please like, subscribe and share. I'm almost at 100 subscribers which is amazing for a guy stuck in his little man cave. Um, it's brilliant and a big thank you to all my subscribers out there. Uh, it's, it's amazing and I'm really honoured that you've subscribed to me. I also have my mini model makes Facebook page. Please have a look on there. I'd Put on things that I'm painting from time to time and little previews for my videos and it's currently locked down at the moment still uh, so please everybody stay safe and hopefully see you all shortly I will get my turntable set up now for you okay so stay safe bye for now take care